This episode is dedicated to the memory of Professor Arabe, our friend and guide from my first trip to Egypt back in 2017. He was an exceptional Egyptologist and a wonderful human being. He was a good man and gone way too soon. Rest in peace, Sadiki. We will miss you. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 63, and in today's episode, I'm going to take you on a journey back in time to my inaugural research expedition to Egypt in 2017, when I had my first and only opportunity thus far to enter and explore the third major pyramid of the Giza Plateau, the Menka Ra Pyramid, as it is conventionally known. And in preparation for today's video, I uncovered some amazing, never-before-seen photos from that research expedition from inside of these reaction chambers, which are now exceptionally rare because that structure has since been completely closed to the public. I will also be presenting some amazing footage from this year's 2022 research expedition where we had the opportunity to explore the exterior of the structure and document the extreme erosion and the unfinished state of the construction. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, both the conventional archaeology and the on-site evidence indicate that this structure was never finished and the construction completely abandoned, which adds to the mystery of this already perplexing structure. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a limited first edition print copy of the book, grab yourself some Land of Chem merch, Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for your support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the land of chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone, here we go with today's episode. So let me begin by saying that the preparation for this video has been an absolutely wild throwback to my first research expedition to Egypt in 2017. And here I am looking very much like a tourist with my not even Egyptian head covering. So these things are more Saudi Arabian than Egyptian, but at this point I didn't have anything to cover my rapidly sunburning head and they hawked these things to tourists all over the sites. But nonetheless, I wore it very proudly that day and I still have it hanging right here behind me. And here I am with Yusuf and Professor Arabe about to enter the final pyramid of Giza. And at this point, I will discontinue the conventional name of this pyramid because neither of the burials that were found inside of this pyramid were Menkara. And yes, according to the conventional archaeological story, there were two burials found inside of this pyramid. One was found in the large upper chamber and it was found in a wooden coffin with Menkara written on the side of it and radiocarbon dating of these bones showed that they were less than 2,000 years old from the Sayyid period. And the second burial was supposedly found inside of a magnificent black basalt container that was located in this lower chamber. But they were the bones of a young woman. And the story goes that this elaborately decorated container was somehow taken out from inside of the pyramid, loaded up onto a ship that then sank into the bottom of the ocean on its way back to England. So it would appear that both of the burials found inside of this pyramid were intrusive from a later period, and neither one of them were actually Menkara. So once again, we have evidence of repurposing for what is known as intrusive burials that came around much later. And who knows what, if anything, was really found inside of that basalt container, which now lies in the bottom of the ocean. So the structure itself, also appears to have been completely reconstructed before the project was ultimately abandoned, as there is evidence for a smaller internal pyramid, which you can see here. There are also two completely different styles of internal chambers, which you can see here, and a shaft system that became completely obsolete once the larger pyramid was built. And the conventional explanation of the timeline of this structure also says that this lower chamber was a part of the later reconstruction. However, it would be impossible to erect the granite slabs inside of this chamber once the first stage of the pyramid above was built. 
So I would propose that the lower granite chamber is actually older and the original reaction chamber of this structure. So here is a diagram of these internal components, and this is the primary chamber that I was just referring to, which they will tell you is a newer addition to the structure. And now I'll show you some of these rare, exclusive pictures, so you can see what it looks like inside of these reaction chambers. And the first two pictures are taken from inside of this upper chamber, looking back toward these two shaft systems. And here is where the conventional story gets even more inconsistent, because if this upper shaft is conventionally labeled as the original passage into this quote-unquote burial chamber, then why the hell is it all the way up here? Also note this carved out feature here, which I will be explaining in just a moment. Okay, so next up, I am standing right here looking at this corner of the shaft system and back toward the southern wall of the chamber. And I was standing here so that I could get a good picture of this carved out housing and its alignment to the circular holes on the southern wall, which you can see here. And here is another shot showing the same area on the southern wall. And a few of these holes here and here on both sides right above the shaft leading down into the primary chamber. And I believe that these holes were carved during the modern era excavations and they were used as housing for the wooden beam and pulley systems that they used to supposedly haul this black basalt container out from the primary chamber. And look here in the western side of the chamber at this very unusual shaft feature that opens up above the primary chamber which you can see here on this diagram. And this is that shaft or passageway that I just showed leading down into this open feature above the red granite primary chain. This particular component is very interesting because it doesn't make any sense to me from an architectural construction or structural support perspective. So here I am investigating the inside of this barrel ceiling as opposed to the tier vaults or A-frame ceilings that we have seen before. And there is definitely some staining here on the walls, which you can see here, that I noticed even back then in 2017, which looks to have been completely cleaned off of the ceiling. And my initial impression, being inside of this chamber, was that it is something like a boiler room. So with that boiler room functionality in mind, let's take a look at the configuration of this gas removal hood, which appears to be just that something like a fume hood above the primary reaction chamber that removes the gases or product from the system. So my initial thoughts were that the water would flow in through this reservoir intake shaft and fill the lower primary reaction chamber system. The gases being produced were then extracted through this extraction hood, which then rises out into the main chamber up here into this extraction shaft. However, having spent very limited time inside of this structure, maybe 15 minutes, at the end of an already exhausting day, and at this point I was still so green and I had spent all of my intellectual energy trying to process what I had already seen across the entire Giza Plateau, and I did not gather enough data inside of this structure to develop a full theory. Not to mention the fact that all evidence appears that this structure was never completed and left abandoned, and you will see abundant proof of that in the footage that I'm about to present. So there are some indications of functional components inside of this structure. For example, the primary reaction chamber in this gas extraction hood. And I've already given you a brief explanation of how it could have operated. But for now, the verdict is still out until I can get back inside of these chambers in search of any indication of the product. For example, the salt deposits that were discovered inside of the Central Pyramid of Giza gave me an indication that they were using this sodium chloride to perhaps produce hydrochloric acid. So there may be still some residual evidence that remains for a later expedition. But for now, I really hope you enjoy this amazing footage of Yusuf and I exploring the exterior of the final Pyramid of Giza. All right, everyone, tis the season. And if you'd like to help support the channel, you can go to thelandofchem.com. I've got some brand new Land of Chem hoodies long sleeve t-shirts we have the new fifth degree logo t-shirts the og logo a 45 45 90 degree triangle representing the red pyramid of dashur with molecular ammonia inside the structure and of course 
limited first edition print copies of the book, The Land of Chem, an initiation into ancient chemistry through the degrees of the Egyptian pyramids. So if you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can get a hoodie, a t-shirt, grab a copy of the book. Either way, all the orders mean more to me than words can possibly ever describe. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the land of Chem here on the Giza Plateau. And at the request of several subscribers, a lot of fun. we're going to do a video here around the third pyramid of the plateau, Menkaura. And there is the spectacular central pyramid. which we will be entering tomorrow, as well as special private access permission into the Osiris shaft. And as we approach the structure, you will see the tiers of red granite at the base of the structure, similar to the central pyramid. And we'll get some documentation of that tomorrow, but there were two layers of red granite at the bottom of the central pyramid. And there were 12 layers of red granite at the base of the Menkara pyramid. And as we discussed, the geology that was utilized in the construction of these monuments was functional. And there's a reason they selected the red granite. And I did have an opportunity to get inside of this structure during my 2017 expedition. But at that point, I was still very much a wide-eyed tourist. Not that I'm not anymore, still very much am. Slightly more knowledge than I had before. But this structure is now closed to the public and is only accessible via special permission. Here are those red granite layers at the base of the structure. And it is the opinion of conventional archaeology that the structure was left unfinished. So you can see here the red granite that has been finished and tapered down to a flat surface. All of these other blocks left unfinished. And when we get around here to the Eastern Temple, there's a lot of evidence that would lead me to believe this conclusion, that the structure was unfinished. But there's still a subject to much debate on that and some very, very unusual erosion inside the Eastern Temple specifically. And we're gonna see that here in just a little bit. That rut was also excavated into the structure at great expense. And they attempted to dismantle this whole pyramid. That was the intent of that rut that was excavated. They wanted to tear this whole thing down. However, after expending all of the money on the project, it was abandoned because that little hole was all they could do. And the pyramid is still here, despite their best efforts. And we're gonna take a little walk around to the Eastern Temple. Stay tuned. All right, everyone, here we go with a tour around the Eastern Temple and Southern side of the final pyramid of Giza. And you can see here the remains of the attempted destruction of the pyramid and ancient quarrying from the pyramid stones. And these marks here are quarrying marks that were made much later by people attempting to harvest granite from the site.
and you can see here the erosion of the limestone blocks that compose the upper part of the temple walls. And remember that everything below this here was buried in sand, so only the parts that were exposed to the elements were affected and deteriorated. And here is a lifting boss that was used to hoist and move the stone that was never removed. And if this part were complete, this piece of stone would have been taken off and the surface finished flat. And here are some black basalt blocks that would have eventually gone all the way up to the top of the wall. And you can see how this lower section was precisely fitted and integrated into the limestone core. And they were in the process of preparing the second level to do the exact same job. But this was never completed. And you can see here that the surface of these stones were also left completely unfinished. All right, and this section here is very unusual because if the conventional explanation of the erosion pattern is correct, then this part should have also been buried underneath the sand. But perhaps there was a dip in the sand here, and this part was also left completely exposed and gradually eroded over time. Other geologists have suggested that this part here appears to be water erosion and not sand and wind erosion.
And as I walk down toward the causeway, the question remains, how long did it take for this erosion to occur? I have been in touch with several geologists throughout the past several years of research, and none of them can give me a conclusive answer about the dating. They say, well, it depends on many factors, how much wind, how much rain, etc. Well, we are in the middle of the desert, and it doesn't rain very often. And when was the last time that there was significant rainfall in the Sahara? Well, I have proposed that these monuments were constructed during the Saharan wet period, more than 5,000 years before the conventional timeline, which would certainly coincide with the erosion patterns that you can see here. I didn't know there was granite at the bottom of these ones too. Yeah. Some of them has megalithic blocks as well. Black stuff is all the remains of mud brick. Yeah. As I told you, some of it goes back to the old game that we said. But according to the Egyptian archaeologist Ahmad Fakhri, these pyramids were never used as barriers. These little ones. And they're not little. That would be a huge tomb for somebody with granite and everything. But the passages, the passages are like 60 centimeters. Who's gonna go there with what? Yeah. Doesn't fit. How are you gonna move inside with a mummy or a coffin or anything? So that's why they say satellite pyramids, but we don't really know. Oh, look at the cloud coming. Mm -hmm. Man, that makes a big difference, huh? Uh, <laughs> that's a really nice panorama, actually. I mean, it is beautiful. It's a lot of stones, man. The Jupiter Temple in Baalbek 
They say it was built in more than 240 years or something like that. 200. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 63, The Land of Chem 2022 Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Research Expedition Recap Part 10, covering the final pyramid of Giza. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in the next episode in the series, I'm going to take you on an exclusive tour through the Valley Temple of the Giza Plateau in preparation for the revelation of the function of these temple systems. So if you haven't already, Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. Click that little notification button so that you do not miss the new videos when they premiere every single week. If you want to help support the channel, just go to thelandofchem.com. You can pick up a book, grab yourself some Land of Chem merch. Either way, all the orders mean the world to me. Thank you all so much for your support. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo. Are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now. <laughs>